Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn. We are continuing our conversation with author Kim Ball. She is a Central Kentucky resident, uh, lives right outside of Lexington, Nicholasville. Uh-huh. And uh, her new book is called Life is a Journey, Don't Give Up. And uh, we talked about how hard you know it can be sometimes on this earth to be a follower of Jesus, yet we don't have to walk through it alone. I want to encourage you, if you missed yesterday's program, to go to our website. You can catch our 14-minute conversation yesterday. Just go to our website. It is simply hopeishere.today. That's hope is here dot today, and you can catch up about her the intro and what her book, the basis of it is. It's a really cool story how God laid this on her heart and the amazing journey of endurance. It took almost four and a half years to get this book written. But the one thing I did not share was that if you want to buy a copy of this book, you're like, man, I want to get this and grow in my relationship with Jesus, or man, I'm on a spiritual journey right now. I want to find out who this Jesus is. You can go to her website. It's Journey On. Kimball.com. That's Journey, like the music group Journey or Life Journey, J O R U N E Y O N K I M Ball.com. Journey on Kimball.com. And you can get a copy of that book. Or you just recently got it, uh, I believe, a place in Wilmore. Is that correct? Yeah, the Francis Asbury Society is also selling copies there. Okay. So there's two ways that you can get that book, and uh, there's lots of lots of chapters in it. Uh, they're short. There's lots of pictures, lots of great quotes, Bible verses, testimonies. I mean, this book, I can see why it took her four and a half years on top of all the challenges because she has covered it from A to Z. Some of the topics are the journey of the Christian life, the basics of Christian faith. And then there's one segment that I just want to focus on some in today's program, God Loves You. I know that a lot of people I know that are followers of Jesus, even for a long time, they get discouraged and they think, does God even love me anymore? And in chapter 10 in Kim's book, she wrote a chapter in this section called You Are Important. And, you know, you talked about that there, Kim, in chapter 10, that everyone needs a purpose and a reason to live. But uh, I love the what you talked about, this big lie that Satan tells there. The biggest lie from Satan is that God is distant and uninterested in you. But God says, you are precious to me, you are honored, and I love you. Isaiah 43, 4. You know, somebody need to hear that today. I have no doubt in my mind. Life's just really beating them up, and the enemy's like, you know, nobody cares about you. God doesn't care about you. But read that Isaiah 43, 4 again, if you will, please, Kim. You are precious to me. You are honored, and I love you. Isaiah 43, 4. I mean, that's powerful right there. I mean, I need to be reminded of that sometime. How about you, Kim? Oh, definitely. I love that verse. And then I love, uh, over, you, know, you flip over on the next page there, and you talk about things as followers of Jesus that we need to remember. And, you know, I mean, they're just some basic things, but I tell you, I think sometimes we make it way too complicated. And you share 10 things that, you know, we always need to remember that God thinks we're important. And uh, just share those things with us, if you will, Kim. Number one, God loves you. Number two, Jesus died for you personally. Number three, Jesus wants a relationship with you. Number four, Jesus wants to talk to you and listen to you. Number five, your life is significant. Six, you have a purpose. Seven, God has a plan for your life. Eight, you can live in joy as you surrender everything to Jesus. Number nine, you can trust in his deep care and concern for your life. Number ten, Jesus wants to walk with you day by day. I know that if you heard those 10 things are short but powerful, that probably two, maybe three, maybe all 10, you're like, wow, I need to hear that. But number three really just kind of pricked my spirit, Kim. It talked, you said, Jesus wants a relationship with you. And I think some people think maybe because of mistakes they've made or they haven't been to church or they're not tithing or you know, whatever it is, or they struggle with their vocabulary, maybe you know, using too much profanity, and obviously God wants us to improve all those things. But one of the things I'm learning is that God loves us not where we could be, not where we should be, but exactly where we are because he really does want a real relationship with us, doesn't he? Yes. I remember driving on Man of War and just feeling really discouraged and alone and just really frustrated. And all I did was call out, God help me. And he met me so sweetly. And that's the kind of God we have. He's a relational God. He wants a relationship with you. And, and he met me even in a, in a difficult time. And all I had to do was just call out to him. I love it. It's that simple, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
It really is. Uh, I've got a great story I want to share. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of running, I guess you call it a halfway house. I've got a couple guys. They've been sober for several months, but you know, trying to get back on their feet. And one of them uh, got a chance to get a new job, but they were uh, requiring him, one, to take a food handler's permit test. And the second, he had to shave his beard because they didn't want any facial hair around the food because mm-hmm. he's going to be a cook in a kitchen. So uh, the one thing uh, he talked to, he was afraid. He called the boss at the new place, and the guy said, hey, you know, don't worry about that. We'll have you take that that first morning, you know, and you've got enough experience. You should be fine with that. And, you know, that'll be part of your package with your job. So that took that load off of him because he needed to have a job to get paid before he could do that part. And the second thing was when he went to go get the haircut and the beard trimmed off, the lady that did it, uh, he was telling her why he was doing it and all this, had been without his beard forever. Well, she got tears in her eyes, and she said, oh, my goodness. And she turned around and showed a picture of her son, and he used to be a chef, and he had cooked for President George Bush. But unfortunately, he struggled with alcohol and died of alcoholism. And she said, you know, I'm so proud of you for being sober this long and you're trying to be a good dad got re-engaged with your kids and making a fresh start starting this new career as a, a cook and hopefully a chef uh, i've got his knives that are just cooking knives that are really really nice but i've just kind of been holding on to him and i think god wants me to give them to you and so i just thought you know you talk about god wants a relationship with you you just cried out for help this guy goes and <laughs> just to get he didn't want to give up his beard had been a part of him but he needed this job so he did and yet god blessed her because you know it reminded her of her son and yet she had something that she'd been holding on to but she was ready to bless somebody else and i think god wants to do more of those things don't you kim yes definitely and all we have to do is just call out to him and he's ready I mean, just the story of the prodigal son, the father's waiting and he's looking. And when he sees his son from a far distance, he runs to him. And that's why we should just remember that. And his son had made a bunch of mistakes, but God saw him. And that's what he does with us. He runs to us. Yeah, I love that because especially back in that culture, the fathers didn't run. But, right. you know, it wasn't like that. It would be you know, more they stood there and it was very, you know, authoritative and things. But it says, like you said, the father came running after him. And so uh, God's running after you. He pursues you. And I love it with Adam and Eve, too. After they sinned, you know, they ate the fruit of the tree. They hid. But God went looking for them and not yelling like, where are you? You're in trouble. I'm going to put you in time out. I mean, you know, he was pursuing them still. And so I think for somebody listening today, they need to know that God wants to pursue a relationship with you, doesn't he? Yes, that's what he wants. He wants that relationship, that daily relationship. And if you, any of your other relationships, you spend time with people. You spend time with the people you love. And so God just wants time with him. Well, I love you, you in this uh other part of this chapter 10 about you are important you had this intimate message from god the father's love letter but all it is 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 scriptures and i heard a pastor say one time many years ago that god's uh, the bible from genesis to revelation is god's love letter to us and so uh you know you combine this whole thing father's love letter intimate message just using scripture so uh really god wants to speak to us through the bible but uh we got to read it right 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 it's a big it's an important part <laughs> And I know that sounds so simple, but I don't think a lot of times people realize it. Another thing I loved in your book uh, about that you are important, because I know so many people don't feel that, Kim. You shared this really good quote from Rick Warden, Warren, one of my favorite pastors from his all-time best-selling book, uh, The Purpose Driven Life, uh, about how God could use anybody. Because so many people think, oh, God could never use me because I've done this or that. Uh, share that uh, excerpt from Rick Warren's book that you share in your book. Um, It's a quote from Rick Warren. It is through ministry that we discover the meaning of our lives. Think of the traits of those God used in the Bible. Abraham was old. Jacob was insecure. Leah was unattractive. Joseph was abused. Moses stuttered. Gideon was poor. Samson was codependent. Rahab was immoral. David had an affair and all kinds of family problems. Elijah was suicidal. Jeremiah was depressed. Jonah was reluctant. Naomi was a widow. John the Baptist was eccentric, to say the least. Peter was impulsive and hot-tempered. Martha worried a lot. The Samaritan woman had several failed marriages. Zacchaeus was unpopular. Thomas had doubts. Paul had poor health. And Timothy was timid. That is quite a variety of misfits, but God used each of them in his service. He will use you too. Rick Warren. I love that. So many people in the Bible that, you know, had challenges just like all of us do, yet God used them all. And, uh, in fact, I think that... uh, 
God prefers using people like that, like us, because then uh, we realize it and other people, wow, they didn't do that. God did that. Right, have definitely. You, have you seen that kind of over and over throughout your time as a follower of Jesus? Yes, and even like where Paul talks about in First Corinthians 2, that he didn't come with eloquent words, but he just came in trembling, and but he just spoke plainly to the people. He wanted to, the power of Christ to be the what, uh, what related to the people. And so I think that's what's important, just come as we are and mm. as we're sharing with people. Come as we are. I love what you put there, a couple of quotes at the top of 103 also, and you had a couple of scriptures to go with them too. But if you will, uh, Kim, share those, please. Our identity comes out of who we are in Christ. Jesus gives us our identity and tells us whose we are. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do good things he planned for us long ago. And then you had another second quote there that really spoke to me. I highlighted it when I read it. If you'll share that with our listeners, please. God still loves us and faithfully and lovingly pursues us, even with our faults and failures. God can use us despite our weaknesses and foolish tendencies. And then you, you head on there, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, verse 9. My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. And I don't mind sharing it, even though I consider myself fairly masculine. Uh, man, God's done some of his best work in my life when I've been at my weakest. Have you found that too, Kim? Oh, yeah, definitely. It's not where you want to be, but God <laughs> seems to really work in those times. <laughs> Yes, he most certainly does. What else would you want to share with people that are listening about, you know, why they are important to God? I mean, there's so many great things in this chapter, but, you know, just from your heart, what would you want to share with people to let them know today if they're listening, just feel like, man, I've got no value at all. Talk to those people out there that feel that way, Kim. I think just to know that God does care. He wants a relationship. He wants to know you. And I think just the examples that are in the Bible all the way throughout of all the different lives and all the different people and the struggles and difficulties they had. And God still met them. He talked with them. He had a relationship with them. And he wants one with you as well. And so we just need to remember that and to never think that God doesn't care or he's disinterested or he wants to stay apart. But he wants to, to be close to us. Well, I love that. And one of the things about this book, uh, you are actually, I think you just started a class uh, just recently about your book, didn't you, on Sunday mm -hmm. nights? Is that correct? Yeah. T tell people about that. They may be interested in that. I know it'll be a couple weeks in once they get started, but hey, they can catch up. So t yeah. tell people about that. Um, it's a class at my church, Church of the Savior on Brandon Road, and it's on Sunday nights from 6 to 7.30. Anybody's welcome to come, so you can get a hold of the church and look at the church website for more information. Or, obviously, another good way to do it is uh, go to your website, journeyonkimball.com. You can actually email Kim at journeyonkimball at gmail.com. So journeyonkimball at gmail.com. What else would you want to share to people uh, as, you know, from this book as we look at the chapter about, you know, you are important? What else would you want to share with people about that, Kim? I think uh, one thing is just in that chapter I put, I talked about my dad being a farmer and taking care of his goats. And when they have babies, sometimes there's lots of babies. And my dad knows which one needs which space. Some are okay to be in the field. Some need just to be in the barn. Some need to be in a really... Um, small place in the barn where it's warmer and some he even brings in the house and so my dad knows what his goats need and so it just gave me a good example of how caring God is he knows what we need and sometimes we need a little more care we need a little more holding a little more attention um, at different times in our life and so just watching my dad do that um, just really helped me to see God's love even deeper wow that's a great analogy I love that well, you know, we don't know what kind of season you're in, but wh wherever you're at, whatever tension you need, ever how much or how little, uh, if you don't need a lot, maybe go find that goat that does. And, uh, you know, we're all goats, and God uses us to love one another. And, uh, man, maybe you just need to text somebody today or call them and let them know, hey, I was thinking about you, and uh, I know that would be a blessing to somebody else. Well, stay with me. Tomorrow we're going to continue our conversation with author Kim Ball on her book, Life is a Journey. Don't give up. I'm Greg Horn, and this is Hope is Here. CMI is your full-service human resources provider in Central Kentucky. For 15 years, CMI Human Resources has taken great pride in helping organizations and people work. Whether it's employee handbooks or help in filling a position, no job is too large or too small for CMI. Contact the professionals today at CMI Human Resources, 859-296-2800 or online at cmiconsulting.com. 